God and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. <clears throat> Today is the fifth Sunday of the Coptic month, and of course on the fifth Sunday, we always read the gospel of Christ feeding the multitude, and they call it the Sunday of Blessing. And in this story, you see the hidden hand of blessing. The hidden hand of blessing. <clears throat> you see everything moving natural. There was nothing according to the sight of man that was supernatural. They had five loaves, two fish. They offered it to Jesus. They presented it before Jesus. He thanked God for it. He gave the same five loaves and two fish back to the disciples. We don't hear anywhere in the story that the bread was multiplying. We don't hear anywhere in the story that the fish was, the, the two became four and the four became eight and eight became 16. We don't see that. We see five loaves, we see two fish, and we see 15,000 people. And one by one, they began to give. And I think sometimes, <clears throat> when you look at it at face value, you don't understand how the story happened. And we don't know how it is that they were filled. We don't know if they were like, like rubbing their stomachs saying, we've eaten way too much. We don't know if <clears throat> every single person took one bite and was satisfied. We don't know anything other than <clears throat> we have five loaves, we have two fish, we have a big problem. And what happened was when the disciples saw this situation, the disciples saw a problem. But Jesus, when he looked at the situation, he saw what? He saw an opportunity. He saw an opportunity. They're saying, we have a problem, send them away. We have a problem, let's minimize the problem. Just send them away. But our Lord is different. His eyes see every problem, every challenge as an opportunity. <clears throat> and I imagine that every time we look, when you see, for example, the story of Lazarus. You see the story of Lazarus. Lazarus was sick. And the story says that Jesus waited for two days to go visit Lazarus. Lazarus was a mile and a half away. A mile and a half away in those days was down the street. Like, just go. Why are you waiting two days? Because the Lord, He loves a challenge. Because at every challenge, He sees an opportunity. To the point where He waited, Lazarus died. Not only did he die, but he was dead for four days. Because God used this challenge for an opportunity. I want each person <clears throat> to look in their life and find out what is their challenge today. What is your challenge? Where is your lack? Where is your hunger? Where is your need? And can you look at this challenge... And present it before the Lord and say, Lord, here's your opportunity. Your opportunity to do something. To change me. Maybe I'm the one that needs to be changed through this challenge or this trial. And so, Lord, I'm presenting this difficult thing and I'm saying, just make it go away. And he says, no. We don't want it to go away. Because this challenge is going to accomplish something in your life and in the lives of the 15,000 people that ate. <clears throat> This is the best thing in the world. When Jesus saw this problem, this was the best thing in the world. Jesus loves a challenge. He loves a challenge. <clears throat> and there are so many times that as long as our eyes, our eyes are earthly, and we have a short-term vision, every problem stays as a problem in our eyes. When you look at Joseph, in his life, in all the challenges that he was facing, God said, these challenges I'm going to use as an opportunity. 
that I'm going to have Joseph. Yes, he's betrayed by his brother's problem. Yes, he ends up in prison when Potiphar's wife falsely accuses him of, of, of doing something impure. He ends up in prison, he's forgotten. God says, these are opportunities. These are the opportunities that I'm going to use to save the whole world. And so Joseph, just follow the path. It's going to be tough a little bit. You're going to end up in a pit sold by your brothers. You're going to be sold as a slave. I know it's going to be tough. You're going to be falsely accused. You're going to be thrown in prison. But this is an opportunity. You, this opportunity will make you the king of the world. This problem, this challenge, this difficult situation is going to make you the king of the world. <clears throat> Sometimes I think in the middle of our stories, like God wants to say, just, just wait a little bit more. Just wait a little bit more. Stop complaining. Stop stressing. Stop thinking of it as a problem. Just wait a little bit more. And I promise you, at the end of it, you're going to be overwhelmed. To the point where every single one of these <coughs> disciples took a basket home as a memory. As a memory to remember, I should never forget. <coughs> I should never forget what God has done in my life. I should never forget what God took from this problem and what was the great opportunity that he made out of it? Joshua. When Joshua was bringing the people of Israel, they had crossed the Red Sea, they had gone through the 40 years, everything is great, the promised land is right there. And what happens? Another problem. We have the Jordan River. We have the Jordan River. <clears throat> And I could imagine Joshua thinking, okay, God, like, I know you parted the Red Sea, and I know you fed us for 40 years, but now what? Are you going to do it again? Can you do it again? Can you possibly part this river like you parted the Red Sea for 2 million people to cross? It's a challenge. And at the end of the story, they crossed the river with struggle. It wasn't an easy thing. Why? Because when they crossed, the Lord said when the Ark of the Covenant and the priests put their feet in the water, the water will stop. Well, where did the water stop? The water of the river stopped 19 miles up the road. Could you imagine? Like the priest thought, Moses last time he put his stick, everything worked magically. The priests, imagine, okay, let me put my foot. Okay, nothing happened. Put my foot a little bit deeper. Nothing happened. The water's up to my neck. Nothing's happening. It happened. But the water stopped 19 miles up the road. Wait. And so they're waiting in the river. Hey, Rabbi, like, come on. Like Moses put the stick. Everything works. Joshua puts it, the, and the priests put their feet. Nothing. They go deeper, nothing. They go deeper, nothing. Till they're up to their throats in water. Where's God? There's the hidden hand of blessing. The water 19 miles up the road stopped. And they had to wait for 19 miles of river to pass through. So they're holding on to the Ark of the Covenant through a very high river. <clears throat> and the water is passing. And the water is passing. And the water is passing. Finally, the water clears and all the people pass the Jordan. And what happens? The Lord told Josh, Joshua <clears throat> to tell the people to send a, a representative of each of their tribes. And I want you to go into this river. And I want you to grab the stones that are on the bottom of this river and take them with you as a memorial. So that when you hang it up on your nightstand at night, you say, what is this stone? Can you believe that this stone was in the bottom of a river that I walked through? Me and two million people? We walked through this river? It's a memorial stone. And these 12 leftover baskets were memorial stones. These were stones to remember the hidden hand of blessing. Hidden hand of blessing. When you give, 
and you calculate your income, you say, okay, I make X amount of money. My, ex my expenses are this much. If I tithe, I'm done. I have no savings. I have no fun. I have nothing. So maybe the tithing, the hidden hand of blessing. God will make what you have work. He'll make it happy. Not to the point where you're going to survive. You're going to have in abundance. You're going to have in abundance. Come on. These are things that Jesus did 2,000 years ago. Abuna, come on. Stop pulling my leg. Stop trying to trick me. It's the hidden hand of blessing. And you'll never know until you try. You will never know about that hidden hand of blessing. I tell students all the time, Abuna, I have so much homework, I don't have time to study. Spend time when, in prayer before you're studying. That's not lost time. That's gained time. What would have taken you two hours to study could take you an hour to study. Then all of a sudden your mind is memorizing things. How? I don't know. It's the hidden hand of blessing. You can't see it. You can't see it. You don't know how it comes. All you see is a problem and it hurts and it's not going to work. There's a blessing coming involved. Something's going to be changed in you. Something's going to be changed in your family. Something's going to be changed in those around you. The hidden hand of blessing. Jesus tells them, the disciples, you give them something to eat. He says, send the multitudes away. And Jesus says, you give them something to eat. Come on. With these limited hands. If anybody's going to give them something to eat, it's Jesus. Okay, like, if anyone is going to solve this problem, it's Jesus. He says, you give them something to eat. You, by your own hands, are going to start passing to the first group of 50. Okay, now I have 300 more groups to go. And I have, I finished the first loaf, and the first group of 50. And I go back to Jesus and say, I need more. And I go back, next group of 50. And I'm giving everybody, like when you see at the end, when Abuna is giving Lutmat al barakah and the last people at the end, Abuna is putting like crumbs in their hand, and he's saying, Malish, just take a blessing. I'm done. They keep on going back to Jesus, and they go. And they go back to Jesus, and they go. And they can't see. But their hands were the hidden hands of blessing. As we started this apostles' fast, and you look to the world, and you say, Lord, Send the multitude away. Is there any hope for this world? Is there any hope for the Middle East? Is there any hope for China? Is there any hope for the immorality in our country? Is there any hope for... And Jesus says, you give them something to eat. Lord, I'm going to give the world that we're living in something to eat. I don't have anything to give. I don't have anything to give. But the whole world is starving. The whole world is starving for God. And what do we say? Lord, send the multitude away. Do something with them. Get rid of them. And Jesus says, no. You give them something to eat. One person at a time, this world will be changed. And I believe it. And, I, and I, I'm sure God is waiting that he took 12 simple men and he turned the world upside down. And the world was never the same. It doesn't make sense. You can't count it. You can't see it. But the hidden hand of blessing. Today God is trying to remind you. Think about your memorial stones. Maybe your memorial stone is a hospital bracelet. And you look at that hospital bracelet and you said, Wow, look at what I survived. Maybe it's... <clears throat> Something in your, in your house that you were able to purchase when you had no, no money. Maybe it was your kids when you look to them and you say, we struggled financially, but here they are. They're married. They're happy. They have children. They're successful. How did we do it? I don't know. Hidden hand of blessing. Maybe I'm raising my children by myself. I don't have extra hands. It's difficult. There's no money. There's no time. There's no energy. I can't do it. Hidden hand of blessing. You give them something to eat. But I can't, Lord, I don't have any more. Bring it to me. How many of us bring our challenges to the Lord and say, Lord, I believe in the hidden hand of blessing. I believe. I believe 
help my unbelief. I know people that their cars don't run out of gas because God knows that they can only afford so much. Their cars don't run out of gas. They fill up once every three weeks. How? I don't know, Abuna. Don't jinx me. Leave me alone. <laughs> don't worry about it. How? I know. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. How does it happen? I don't know. But that's God. Leave me alone. That's the hidden hand of blessing. Come on. You put 10 gallons in the car. You've driven 10,000 miles. Sooner or later, your gas is supposed to run out. Don't worry about me. I live by the hidden hand of blessing. Do you want to know what's amazing about this story? <clears throat> the people were not going to die of hunger. The disciples would not have told Jesus to send them away if they couldn't have found provision. Like he's not going to say, send them away and let them die in the desert. No. Let them get a head start. They'll make it and they'll eat. Jesus says, no. I'm going to show you that you are going to feed them. We're going to do the impossible and we're going to do it right here. I just send them. If they walk for an hour, they're going to go to their homes, they're going to find some markets, and they'll take care of themselves. No. You need to know. Today you have a challenge. Today you have a challenge. And God is saying, I want to do the impossible. That's why you have this opportunity in your life. You are going through an opportunity, not a challenge. And God is saying, give them something to eat. Give the world the gospel. Give the poor food. Give the haters love. I have no love to give them. I have no love to give my persecutors. Bring it to me. Say, Lord, give me that I may love the unlovable. And you'll do it. And there's no worthiness based like, this doesn't happen based on your worthiness. Oh yeah, because I'm a saint and I'm fasting and I'm praying. Of course God is going to do that. These were multitudes <clears throat> that crossed a lake later on. You see it in John chapter 6. And they're begging for more. And God knows these are not spiritual people. These are people that just want more food. They want to see more miracles. So this is not going to happen. God is not going to feed and God is not going to use based on our worthiness. But based on who God is. Abuna, that's for the saints. No, it's for the sinners too. You and me both. God is happy and longing to feed the multitudes. God looked at the multitude and he says he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. Don't you think that Jesus looks to the world and says, those are sheep without a shepherd? Give them something to eat. Give the people at your work today or this week something to eat spiritually. Give the people that are fighting, they have a hopeless marriage, and they're done. They've been done for 10 years. Give them something to eat. Lord, they're, they're done. They're, they're done. Khalas, they're done. Give them something to eat. I'm going to revive their marriage. Nothing brings more joy to my heart than when somebody struggling in a marriage for, for, for 10 years, separated for years, come back with a restored, renewed marriage and commitment. Hidden hand of blessing. How? If you look at the, the situation, this is a hopeless case. But the Lord, hidden hand of blessing. The question is, do I want, do I want God to use my challenges and make opportunities out of them? It's going to take a little work. It takes a little faith. But at the end, these disciples will never forget that day. This, this miracle is recorded in every gospel because every gospel writer wanted to make sure that everybody knows this story because this was their story. This was the day that I held one loaf and fed 3,000 people with it. Every single one of them said, okay, I felt, fed 750 people with it. And I, fed, I had a, a, the, the fin of a fish and I fed 1,000 people with it. How? I don't know. That's the Lord. Today, as we fast as apostles fast, as we fast this fast of the Holy Spirit, I say, Lord, my hunger, my hunger for love, my hunger for, for, for money, for, for companionship is overwhelming. 
And God wants to satisfy that hunger. I pray that today we would ask also God to create in us a hunger for Him. Say, Lord, maybe I'm not hungry for spiritual things. Create in me a hunger for divine things. Create in me the hunger. I'm not hungry. I'm snacking on the world. Say, Lord, give me the opportunity to experience your love and create in me a hunger for what you have to satisfy. And he is more than willing to satisfy and to satisfy in abundance. May God give us hearts of faith that believe in the hidden hand of blessing. And glory be to God for.